All right, hello there, person. Welcome back to the stream making the video game Wraith Binder with yours truly, Wizard Boo, one of the most entertaining wizards you'll ever meet. Check it out. We got the thing we're creating today called the timer component. We're going to be giving birth to this thing, the timer component. It's a thing that's going to replace another thing, which is ugly and horrible. We're going to be getting rid of a different baby and accepting and adopting a new baby. So guess just this is how the world works, right? Check it out. Look at these things right here. This is tick.h. This is a thing where we can schedule some functions to run later. And that works in a single player game just fine. But when it comes to a multiplayer game, you need to do this tricky thing called rewinding or rolling back your game state. And if you've got some functions that need to happen at a, exactly at a certain tick for everything in your game to say in perfect sync. It's a big problem if you're rolling back your game state to a previous tick. You're, you also have to roll back these functions, right? So I've come up with this idea that I'm going to create a timer component where all of the functions that need to happen at an exactly a certain tick will live inside this timer component, which is the thing that can be synced up quite easily because it becomes game data. Rather than being in this arbitrary place called the, the, the ticks list of functions to call, it's going to now be in a solid place that is attached to an, a specific entity, whereby also, if that entity is destroyed, it destroys the timer component. So if a, something was scheduled to happen for a certain entity at a certain tick, and you roll back your game state to a to point before you had ever even created that entity, Oh my gosh, All it, this naturally destroys the timer component. Same thing if you're creating an entity across a boundary like that. Let's say you roll back your game state and you tick a few states into the future. You're starting to fast forward and you create a new entity. It's going to create that timer component with that entity along with all the other things that are happening during the tick for that point of the game. So very nice natural solution to funk doors that need to be attached to objects and kept responsible for, if you will. Let's proceed. Here we go. We're going to be starting by kind of copying what this is doing here. Schedule before tick. This is pushing back functions and index funk types into the tick list of functions so this the way this works is it's got a, a list of add before tick funk which are vector of timers why what's a timer here oh me oh my is our is our chat connected my chat just refreshed over there it's freaking me out okay yeah right we're gonna do something like similar like this where a timer component also has a little structure for a timer kind of weird all of my color coding for my code right here is totally different than it was yesterday because I upgraded NeoVim last night. So something weird's happening there. Hey, what's up, Sushi Gamers? Yes, it's a huge amount of code, isn't it? Okay, so we've got, we're including kit standard. Do we need, yes, we need to keep these timers. We, we have to include functional here, okay? But we don't need standard. We don't need to forward declare those. Okay, let's get rid of some of these files we're not using right now. So it's easier to go back and forth between these. Obviously going to have something like this where we have some functions we can call, which schedule some timer functions that can happen later. Uh, actually, hmm, we're also, we also have one other kind of function that we can call. It's called a sch schedule after update. I think that's the way this is going to work is like this. Yeah, I'm not sure if we're actually going to use that function with this timer component. We'll see. We're going to start by just doing these ones. These are basically scheduling scheduling a function to happen at a certain delay, which will get translated into ticks. And these two functions are scheduling a functor to happen periodically over an interval for a count. Oh, got this timer structure, you're saying? Yeah, so the way that, yeah, it's got several vectors timers. Timer component itself probably is not gonna need the add and it doesn't need any of these adds actually. Also gonna, definitely gonna need vector to be declared. We're just gonna call this one timers. Maybe we're gonna have that. I'm not sure if we're gonna need that. Okay, well, this looks like a nice header file. Look at this, wow, Pre appreciate, wow. Wow. Cool. So let's start writing these methods. So if we are to add this schedule after update method, we'll just write it funk and delay. We'll, we'll comment it out for now. Actually. Okay. We already need tick dot H. All right. So we're writing the schedule before tick function. We would just want to push back into our timers. Oh, start by changing these names. Okay. Now I also want to look at how tick actually adds the add before tick funks. So, okay, when once it cleans them, it actually, oh yeah, that's the only place it actually translates them. Okay, so this is where it's adding in, yeah. Okay, so the, the way this is meant to work is the tick keeps a list of all the functors that it needs to add into its list, and then it does so after the tick, so it doesn't 
mutate the array or apply things during the tick. It does it after the tick, so it's a little more simple. But the way a timer component's gonna work is it's gonna push back right into it because hopefully that's not, actually we should probably, we might wanna do something like this, like assert that we are not iterating this component timers right now. We might need to do something about that, like add a lock or like a mutex-like object or something like that. This could just be math round eye and we need math.h round eye is the right thing. Yeah, if it's greater than zero, add plus 0.5. Yeah. Okay. Essentially, this looks like the basics of what we want. We'll want some kind of function which actually ticks through the timers. We'll get to that. I think the next thing to do is to implement this, to start this off. What we want is to use this when an entity wants to destroy itself after a certain time. This happens a lot in the game. Like, for example, when you simply just attack something with your sword, you're creating a temporary attack component, part of an entity. That entity is basically just a little entity that's that is just a square that fits on the ground that is that says, in this space right here right now, I am attacking right here. And after a certain time, that entity goes away. So that's an example of where we would use this timer component to destroy an entity. So let's start hooking all that up. We need to, first we need any entity that is going to destroy itself needs to have timer component. So this is all tied to the function ent destroy with a delay. So this is where it goes and pushes things back into its own destroy timers array. 10 minutes remain. And then those get ticked later. So we're going to implement this in a totally different way. Kind of want to be able to get a timer component. So the, the interesting thing about the timer component is that I'm not making it a part of this structure called an ent. An ent is just a quick way to get access to all of an entity's components, except for the timer component in this case, because the timer component is a special thing that is it's ticked in its own special way. And I don't want it to be a part of a regular ent structure because I want the regular ent structure to be rather quick. And this will slow it down slightly for every single entity. Whenever I add another component, it's taking a slightly more, a little bit of a time to hook up these references when we create an ant structure. Now that I'm realizing, it actually isn't that much of a cost because the ant structure is only created once. It just gets looked up. So that actually, we actually might want to create timer there, but it's okay. We can do it this way still. Okay, so pseudocode, basically we just would, if timer component doesn't exist, create it, get the timer component. Add a function, add a timer to destroy this entity. Okay, and I'll be right back. Five minutes remain. Hey, Rudy Ahmad. Yes and no. This game does use Cocos 2 dx but you won't see any of it in this stream. And it's a very small port part of this game engine at this point. There's a whole wrapper layer underneath everything that you're seeing here that uses Cocos 2 dx on Mac and Linux, but on Windows, it uses my publisher's engine, which uses DirectX. So, okay, so we're creating the timer component if it doesn't exist and we're getting the timer component. I think that's something we can make a static method of timer component. So static timer component. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. So yeah, just timer, static timer component get for an entity id. That's all we need to do there. We're already including entity foo, so we have the id type and all we got to do is get a timer component or construct one or add one to a, an entity if we need to. So we can try and get the component by doing entity get component. Oh no, it's get entity get timer component. Two minutes remain. Or id. And then if we have that component, then we can return it. That's how this function works. This is entity get class that returns an, oh, this is awesome. I love how this works, forgot. This does get the component and then creates an empty component if we don't find it, which is exactly what we need at this point right here. Very nice coding previous me. Okay, so that's, oh no, no, that's not right. Okay, we do want to actually create the entity, the component if we don't have it. So kind of enclose this in its own namespace or sorry, block so that we can do a similar thing for hollow ref C equals NT cre create add component. This is not the add component I'm thinking of. I think it's the inline. Oh, right, right. Okay. The way this one works is we have to pass it a data, but it can be empty. So we're going to say we need to include entity foo dot inline. And here we are adding component to this id given 
data empty and return C. No matching function call. What are you talking about? Entity add component. Oh, we also need the, we need to do this kind of thing right here. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, this is returning what? Bool. Why would it return false? Oh, if it couldn't allocate from the heap, a possibility. But we can actually ignore that because this function right here, whoops, it creates a blank component if need be. Okay, there, bam. All right, so in end.cpp, we have this function we can use now. So all we want to do is add a timer and destroy this entity, which we will do auto ref timer equals timer component get and then timer dot set schedule. So this is where we would schedule it with ant destroy maybe. Okay, so we need to we could wrap this in a functor. Let's see what that would what that would look like. So or a, a lambda function, we would capture our id and then we would call and destroy now. Does that, does that work? I'm wondering if the compiler will allow this because destroy now is a private method of int. I don't know if you can schedule a Lambda. I'm not sure if a Lambda can actually call a private method. If it's created within a private, within that class, it looks like it's working. Wow, I did not know this was possible or allowed. Very nice. Thank you, Bjarn, all of your awesome work. Wow, this could actually work. Okay, well, let's give this a shot. So what do we need to do here? We've got this ant destroy method created. We know it can create timer component. Oh no, that we need to somehow tick the timer system. So we need a whole, kind of need a timer system. We might be able to get away without one for a second. Let's see what we what we can do with this. So destroy timers. We all, we're probably gonna need to pull out this entire destroy timers the way this works as well. Where is ant tick destroy called from? I think that's system. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I think we can get away from with this for now by ticking all the time timer components when we would have done the destroy timers. So components. Let's get these components. Components equals ant entity get all timer component. So we're going to loop over C in the components. And then we also need to loop over. Well, I, this is where we would want to create a function for. Oh, wait, wait, wait. What does entity get all return us? A vector of ids. Oh, this is an id. Right, right. This is good because then we could set something like this, right? Before we were doing this, this kind of vague thing setting during tick destroy to true, which was just saying that we are looping over all the destroy functions. And a much smarter way to do it would be to actually know what entity we're destroying at this point so that we can be more specific about our assertions that we are not adding a function right when we were destroying another. Okay, so auto ref C equals timer, no, entity get timer component, and then we need to run our function. So we're gonna have a void tick double delay. Let's actually call this tick timers. First of all, so we don't, oh, we're not gonna need this int tick anymore. Oh gosh, we need this to be a bool is render right there. And also we could do like is after update. So we can add those kind of methods too later. And we don't need this int tick or int is bool is render anymore. And same thing here, we don't need these ticks or is renders. Pretty simple constructor there, I love it. I love it. Look how simple all this is right now. Oh, we need an active. We at least need an active. Full active. So undo. So the regular constructor is active false. If we are constructed with a data, regardless of if that data is full, we said active true so that our operator bool can return active if this isn't actually created, constructed properly. Timer component. Kidok. Sweet. We got that. Um, now we need a function to tick all, tick all the timers. Okay. We can actually call this tick now, which I like a little better. Okay. So we need to loop over. It actually would be nice to have, we've got double delay and nice if we had the current tick also. I think that's good. Yo, space my name is going well, man. Working on a, a thing that'll make multiplayer a little bit better. How you doing, man? Okay, so we're gonna loop over all of our timers. And if any of the timers have expired, we will delete them from our array. So we want to, this is actually some, it's very similar to the loop we were already doing in int.cpp. Getting some stuff done. I like it. I like it, man. What What are you getting done? Okay, let's, uh, I see what this is all doing. This is checking the map destroy. This is, this was map destroy, but timers are a vector. So we don't need to worry about that. We don't need to, we don't need to track what whether I is less than count, technically don't even need I. It might be, it might be nice to actually keep the I. 
for account. Text boxes, right. Doing using your custom font? Cool, man. Right on. Okay, so each timer has a we don't even we don't even need to call this it. This is no longer a map, so we're just iterating over a vector, which means that we can replace all these its with like we don't have to access them like a pointer anymore. And also first and second are no longer relevant we are using direct we're directly accessing a timer struct so we're actually ticking down the timer so that would be first second not second so if t dot second would be timer so if t dot timer equals zero oh well actually t is pointer so yeah it, this is kind of like an iterator but we can do this we can go auto ref t equals in direction of it this should never happen right here but we're adding a little fail safe just in case it does okay so our id is oh can we push that back we don't even need an it anymore huh timer equals zero actually we want to go to yeah our timer can go to zero or more so i'm thinking we need to actually add one more variable here this is the input delay a tick now if our timer is less than or equal to negative input delay tick then we can destroy this timer from our list actually first we want to check if t dot timer equals zero then we actually call the functor so if funk no worries no worries to ask off topic questions how did you manage to publish Songbringer on playstation theory it's not possible with cocos true it is not possible to use cocos to publish on consoles so consoles have their own proprietary engines you have to talk to sony talk to microsoft talk to nintendo and get a dev kit and learn how their entire engine works and port your entire game to to their to their engine basically so luckily for songbringer i was working with the publisher called double 11 who i'm still working with on this game wraithbinder they're amazing i love them and they helped me port Songbringer to all of the all of the consoles that it got ported to. So it's a lot of work. I would definitely recommend finding someone to help you if you're gonna do that. Yeah. Oh right, if t.funk. This is funk or an index funk. Oh right. We also need to check if how does tick run its there it is reform run the before tick funks. Minus minus timer equals zero. So we're kind of like merging two two systems into one system right here. And all of this is going to benefit the multiplayer because these merging these into one system and making it a component is basically making it so it can it can be safely rewound or fast forwarded in time. So because these are attached to an entity, which, oh, I just realized these can't be timers anymore. They have to be actual ticks. Oh yeah, we have to change this. Okay, so we can't use a timer. We have to use a tick because when we're rewinding a game state, if we were to re, if we were to rewind the game state and it were and we were using timers, for example, the way a timer would work is you would say, "All right, here I'm creating this function. I want it to happen in eight ticks. So my timer is the value eight. So the next tick you you subtract it, it goes down to seven. The next tick it goes to six, five, four, three, two, one, zero, and then the function happens. That doesn't work if you rewind your game state though, because you would need to go into every single timer component and modify it based on how much you've rewound the game state. So if you use just a tick value, like, so you say, instead of saying, I want my timer to be eight, you say, I want this to happen at tick 1000, then you don't have to, you don't have to change anything if you rewind your game state. You just, it's always gonna happen at tick 1000. So that's much better. We're gonna do that. And instead of saying minus minus t dot timer equals zero, we're saying if t dot tick equals tick, then execute our function. And all these timer dots, we can change to t dots. It's this clear scheduled thing. Forget what this was for. Dang, I should have put a comment on this, but oh well. We don't need, we don't really need that. <laughs> Hopefully we don't need that. All right, that, there we go. If t dot tick equals tick. Yeah. Okay, so if t dot tick plus input delay tick. So you, yeah, yeah, this, this is, we can write it this way. If this is greater than or equal to the tick, then we need to just remove this timer from our list. So also we need to plus plus the iterator here and oh yeah this is this is a vector so if we don't have an iterator from timers up again we need to break that's a real bad error okay so we need to call our function no this is where we this is where we destroy so we're just saying it equals timers dot erase oh this is no longer a map so we don't need to worry about using that descriptive thing we don't need to do that so there this is how our new timer component should be ticked something like about like this okay so we've got tick destroy this is now something like this where it goes c dot tick our delay 
is, or that's delta, or delta equals tick delta. Did I call that a delay? No, that's supposed to be delta. Whoops. All right, C dot tick delta. And our tick is gonna be now, which is const auto now equals tick tick. And our input delay ticks also, that is input get delay tick. Okay, we got this all now so we can push back into a timer components timers. And we also have it so we can tick all of the timer component timers. We do need to do one more thing here, and that is to kind of refactor anything else that was using destroy timers, because a lot could go wrong if we're still trying to mess with this vector of stuff. This is, there's some important things that are happening here in the rest of this whole destroy timers thing. So we're going to have to com comment this out and make sure we are not using this at all. Okay, so we're going to mimic the same method with a delay of zero. Oh, also when we schedule, this is really important. We need to say our tick is tick, tick plus get to get tick. Same thing there. When we schedule our periodic schedule function, I'm going to go ahead and say that it would be nice to have an id right here. Probably something I'm going to do for now. Let's keep on to moving along with this whole destroy timers, making sure this, this is the, here's one of the most important parts. It's also destroy now. Oh, uh, we don't have any way to say, huh? This is a tricky one right here because we want to, we want to destroy an entity. If, if a, a parent entity is being destroyed, we want to destroy its children and calling that from this function called also destroy now, which yeah, it does not like that because we can't call that from a static method like this. It has to be from an int function. Is that the only place that's being called? Oh, that needs to be chain that id. Okay, that gets rid of this need for also destroy now and also gets rid of that problem we had with it being a private function. Sweet, okay. Let's see what else we, can, we have to refactor. None of this we need to worry about. Remove destroy timer. This is, where is this being called from? It's meant to be called outside of tick destroy. Oh, that's when it sync comp syncs components. Oh, we don't need to worry about that anymore. Because of the whole way we've refactored this entire architecture, when we destroy an entity, we are also destroying its timer component, which destroys all of its timers. We don't need to worry about trying to remove some extra thing. This is really great. This is a sign that we're we're coding something correctly. We're in a, at least in a more sublime way. Also this, we don't need to destroy these extra destroy timers because when we're destroying all entities, we're automatically destroying the timer components. Super duper, will destroy, is this a really a thing? Does anybody actually call this? Oh my gosh, world.cpp does? List erosion entities. Hmm, so we can't, we can't erode an entity that has a destroy function. So this is kind of important. We need, we need a way to know if an entity will be destroyed. What about this will destroy this tick? Is this the, that's the end of it though. We're down to the last two functions functions. Okay, good. We can get rid of at least one of these. Okay, now we're just down to this one last method. This is important because when an entity is being eroded, it needs to not destroy something that's already about to be destroyed. The right way to do this actually is to do another Boolean. You could actually argue that I could change all of these to bits so that I could have more than four of them within four bytes, but it doesn't really matter at this point because we're only using four bytes anyways. Okay. Let's, so I'm thinking what we could do is create a, th a thing called schedule destroy after a flow delay. That's going to need to call entities destroy now. So let's go ahead and uh, I think we need to make this public so the timer component can call it. So we've got a schedule destroy. This is timer dot is destroy equals true. Our function though, we need the id. So we either need to pass it right here in schedule destroy or we need to pass it into creating component the simplest way to do it for now is to just pass it in to schedule destroy i don't for some reason i don't like it i don't like it let's actually do this the right i think this is going to be a better in the long term to actually add an id to the timer component which also gets rid of our active variable we don't need active anymore we just have an id so we're going to create we're going to get our id from data that gets passed to us so our id equals math no no we just do oh gosh we don't even need to really do that this is already com we can say auto ref d equals v dot get child id and then if d id equals d dot get int and return bool id right int's greater than zero okay now we've got our id we also need the get method to where's that get method at 
Oh, there it is. Okay, we just circumvented our need for this right here. Okay, okay, this could all work. This could work. Oh, one more thing. When we're scheduling a destroy, we should, in debug mode, we should loop through all of our timers and assert that that it doesn't already have. So if t dot is destroy, then we can assert be false. Like it's already going to destroy this function. We can't destroy it twice. So we're going to assert be false, but also when we're in release mode, we're just returning. So actually this does need to happen in release mode. Okay, there, that's a little safer. Oh, also we need to call and destroy now on our id and we need int. Okay, so now we can write a function called int will destroy id, which can loop over all the timer components and just see if, no, we just need to look at the one timer component. So timer component itself can have a bool will destroy. And that could be a const. And it's very similar to this method, right? Or to this stuff we just wrote right there, except that it's not gonna assert false. Oh, actually we can probably use it. So we got will destroy const. It returns a bool and we loop over our timers. And if we have a t dot dis is destroy, then we return true. Otherwise we return false. And we can just say, if this will destroy, then we are asserting be false and returning. Okay, so now in, in we don't need this function in ant anymore called will destroy. We can comment this one out too. And in position, you know, in world, where is that will destroy? Okay, instead of that, we can say if entity get timer component for e.id dot will destroy, then continue. Okay, wow, we just implemented a lot of there. We've refactored an entire system, this whole system which destroys entities at a certain tick. So we're gonna hope this compiles correctly. Then we're gonna set a breakpoint when it first creates a timer component. Then we're gonna set a breakpoint when it first executes a timer component. And we're just gonna basically kind of step through the code and make sure this is all working how it's supposed to. Okie doke. So we're gonna set our first breakpoint whenever we construct a timer component. Okay, apparently, we, oh, there's one. All right, let's see where what's our call stack here. Who, who actually is doing this? Anims. Oh, right, right. When we are creating an animation entity, particles, for example, particles need to destroy themselves after a little while. So we are getting timer components. So let's go ahead and add that. Let's step into this add component method. It should, should oh, what happened there? Our C equals null, our, uh, if no data, return false. Of course, okay, okay. We need to do this the right way. We do need this little bit of code we wrote. That's, like, that's kind of cool. We can keep that there and we need some data so this is our data and we can say data dot add child add child our query for that is id and our id is string zero sent you id and then we need to pass that and we don't need to do this right here where it gets oh wait we do need to do that so you just go return entity get right there look it up look it up look it up all right set another breakpoint fire it up in debug mode Okay, we are pushing back into our data. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and trust that that's working. All right, we're stepping in. Yeah, this time this is working. Is it using the buff? Cool, it's even using the cat. It's caching this part of its entity cache, which is really great. I do want that. It's awesome. Good thing to verify. Sweet. Good to know. Okay, so then we're stepping in and we should be getting an id. Yeah, our id is 17. And so our id for this timer component is 17. We have zero timers so far. That's great. That's exactly what we wanted. Boom, sweet. And we should be able to return the timer component and auto timer, v timer, id 17. Cool, great. Let's do one little thing. Let's go to our LLD, yeah, this thing. And for our components, we can do a summary string for timer component now. Okay, so we're here we are scheduled our first timer we should have a fun oh we're not using the destroy oops okay so we did do we forgot one thing in our int destroy we left the game run okay the game there we go game's closed now we want to call timer dot schedule destroy or delay this is a little bit nicer in the sense that it can track which of these is a destroy function so we can know that it will be destroyed at one point in the future okay so all of our dot schedules so when is a schedule destroy zero same thing for this one it's this one here oh and all oh, right immediately destroy yeah okay good okay yeah now we're using the right functions good 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 okay so we're gonna set a breakpoint now here in schedule destroy do you pronounce it schedule or schedule i'm just having fun saying schedule but is that is that proper am i speaking proper english Who knows Okay, nice. This should be some, from the same thing when we're creating an 
an animation entity. Yep. Particles. Shed will destroy. If this will destroy, let's see if it will. No, of course, because there's no timers yet. Push back a timer. We set up this function, so we destroy ourselves. We set our tick. What is the tick going to be set to here? Let's see. V timer. Tick 254. What's our tick now? Our tick now is 217. Okay. All right. So now we've got a timer pushed back. What we need to do next is debug this timer component tick. So we're going to set a breakpoint here. Let it go. Okay. Boom. It works. We got, we're ticking this one. This is, uh, we're calling tick destroy from the end of our whole tick and this should be oh gosh i just realized something pretty important this method here is not going to work correctly if the input delay ticks is zero okay we need to we need to refa refactor this it needs to kind of work like this we got this bit of code that runs the function but that sometimes the function can be run and the timer can be destroyed at the same time so yeah there you go okay so let's take a look at this code that we just wrote if we have reached the tick that we need to execute this function at, we execute this function. Yeah, that's t.index, t.count. Okay. And then we erase the timer if the tick plus input delay greater than or equal to our tick. So if that's zero, then we do just erase it right when we do call this function. And then otherwise, we just increment the iterator and proceed with our loop. Okay, I like this. This is better. Now we can, if our input delay is zero, we are now going to execute the function and remove the timer the exact same time as it should be. Okay, so this is all, how can we know that this is actually working correctly? First of all, we'll check this, but I think if we, if we swing our weapon, the sword, the ax or anything, and it just sits there infinitely destroying everything around it, then I know, then for, for sure, we haven't removed our entity correctly. Okay, so we're going to set a breakpoint when we actually hit the tick. So our current tick is 257 and this timer. Oh, we could also set up um, a little, what do you call these? LLDB summary timer component timer. Summary string is going to be tick var dot tick index var dot index over var dot count render var dot is render destroy var dot destroy okay so check this out we can actually input this in to our type summary right there and then vt didn't work uh because it's a vector timer component timer val type timer component timer hmm wonder why that didn't work Maybe, oh do we need a step one hold on let's what if we step okay we're getting a summary string parsing error okay so what did i do wrong in my summary string timer timer var dot tick var dot index var dot count var dot is render oh var dot is destroy there okay it's working now check it out look at this look at that nice summary string tick 294 index blah 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 i like it we set a breakpoint here yeah we did okay let's look at this run i don't know what happened i continued but we are not continuing okay let's let's stop this let's try this again this time we're gonna set a breakpoint only here once it runs the function I feel like we should have triggered that breakpoint already. Something's something's off here. Oh yeah, check it out. Those entities are just staying around forever. Hold on, what if I turn on? See, it just destroys every entity that we we. It's definitely not okay. So it didn't hit that breakpoint. So if I if t dot tick equals tick. Okay, if something's wrong with either what it's either the way it's ticking or the way it's comparing its timers tick. Is this supposed to be a minus sign right here? So we've got a tick. Let's say we're trying to execute a timer at tick 1000 and our input delay ticks is 10 and the current tick is 990 so t dot tick would be 1000 plus 10 would be 1010 is greater than or equal to 990 yeah that would run that would erase this right away okay so this is definitely the problem so if t dot tick definitely i should remove the word definitely from the sentence i just said earlier t dot tick minus input delay so far we're trying to execute at 10 oh yeah minus so if, if our tick is a thousand our input delay in ticks is 10 and our tick is 990 then 1000 minus 10 would be 990 so we would erase at no 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 we want we want to erase our function after that whole delay so t dot tick is a thousand that executes at a thousand yeah no that is plus we want to erase the timer so if input delay ticks is 10 then t dot tick would be plus input delay would be a thousand and ten and if that's greater than or equal to the, our current tick of 1000 okay yeah yeah that's right huh okay well let's say set of breakpoints where it happens every single tick 
All right, so we've got that. Now let's set a breakpoint when we are going to run the function and also when we are going to erase the timer. Let's see what it does this first run through. Oh, it erases it already once. Okay, our current tick is 168. Our T is 205. Oh, duh. It's supposed to be tick plus input delays is greater than T dot tick. Okay, I'm just, I'm running it without debugging first. I just want to see if this works. Don't do this at home, kids. Always debug your code. Yes, look at that. We swung the sword and it did not just destroy everything. Okay, let's now let's debug and make sure that that actually did what we thought it was going to do. Okay, so it is running the function at tick 199, which we wanted to run at 199. Boom, this is great. So if t.funk, we step into t.funk, called ent destroy now, and boom, it's destroy our entity. This is how, this is everything we've been trying to write this whole stream. Awesome. It, whoa, we don't need to do, we don't need to look at all this. Don't need to look at all that. And then it destroys it in the same tick because our input delay in ticks is zero. And it removes that timer. That should be the end of our timers. Ooh, ooh, ooh. One possible issue. I'm curious why that didn't crash because we just destroyed an entity. But check this out. We are destroying a timer component right now. Like, check this out. We should be hitting this end timer component destruct step over that boom yeah it's definitely calling timer component destruct because we are looping over all of our sids and destructing every one of our components okay this is really good that we're checking this and we can get out of that that's where it's deleting the the entity in the destroy now so essentially what we've done is we've just destroyed all of our timers, but yet we're still iterating over the timers right here. This is a very bad situation. If we had other timers, this would not be good. So this function right here, it equals timers.erase it. I don't like it at all. This is a very bad thing that's happening right now. I don't know how this is not crashing. We've already destructed this component. It's gone. Oh, it might've been because it was it's it was constructed from the cache of entities using the, that special operator new, which can use your own memory. So perhaps the memory is still there. And that's why it's like, oh, I can still see that I had the timer here. Essentially what we need to do is if T is an is destroy. We are we are literally destroying this. So we need to return. Actually, we don't even want to access T because that could already be wrong. So we need to do a const bool is destroy equals T dot is destroy. We need to make a copy of this before we do this. And then we need to say if is destroy return. That's the safe way to do all this. And that just exits straight from this method right away as soon as we destroy ourselves. Okay, one more thing I want to do is make sure that we are... There's this thing in tick destroy that goes, this is the during tick destroy. Uh, it only uses it there when it re removes a destroy timer. It doesn't need to happen anymore because we're already calling int destroy now. Oh, there's also re destroy. Yeah, it actually can remain in place for now. Ah, oh, man, we're, yeah, let's do, let's do this the right way. This is how it should be. Get rid of this function entirely. So we, we're not even checking during tick destroy anymore. But it'd be nice. We did this. We said we had like a current timer component. Current timer id equals zero. Wait, what good is this doing? Current timer id equals id. Current timer id equals zero. Is that doing any good? I mean, we could, we, in our side, our, inside our tick, we just want to know that the entity hasn't been destroyed. And we already have this protection for is destroy. So I don't think we need to protect this any more than we already are. Well, well, well. I don't think we need this current timer id thing. Don't even really need to track that. Okay. Seems to me that everything is now in place for us to destroy entities at a certain tick using our new timer component component where there's a lot more uses we're going to have for this timer component but let's let's start off by just making sure the game still works as it should one thing we can tell is if we hit some rocks they shouldn't all just destroy immediately that's good see how it took those pillars down a little bit but they're still there that's a good sign. Also, we're making some particles and they are going away. And also that acid we saw on the ground, that goes away after a little bit. So it seems to me that things are working. Oh, that's not good. Oh, it looks like we tried to destroy an entity that already had, that already was going to be destroyed. And it was a, a warning too. We're clearing a warning. This can happen here from AI system where it calls behavior clear. It essentially could call itself a, a bunch of times. It could try and clear entities more than once. It clears warnings in other places too. Well, it can call clear warnings a whole bunch of times. So that's probably what's happening. We're clearing the warning more than once. And so basically when we, our timer component does not need to assert fail if we have a destroy already. Okay. 
okay we do need to update our our existing our existing timer if we're if we have a timer we need to make sure that it's the the lesser of the two so we need to make sure so if we have a, a timer already that we are destroying our entity at a certain tick we need to make sure that t dot tick equals math min t dot tick or tick and this i want to set a breakpoint and see this happening in real time to make sure that we're doing the oh 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 hold on hold on Poop. very important we also need to return from here so we don't create another another timer oh and we also need to debug that okay oh shoot did i nerd okay i don't know where i set a breakpoint there but we're we're debugging Ah, oh, we set it there. Okay, so we want to set a breakpoint here. All right. So this happened last time when we encountered some enemies. They have these warnings and boom, there it happened. Nice. We're trying to schedule destroy when we already had a destroy function. So the tick, we're supposed, this new one we're trying to do is 1089 and we already had one scheduled for 1161. So, oh, this is a very good example right here. We want to set that tick for this timer to be 1089 because what's the delay the delay is instant like zero like we want to destroy this thing right now that makes a lot of sense so tick destroy it right now what's what where is this being called from an entity falling so this is in the move system so we're going to actually tick this timer later this makes sense that's good okay so good so let's do vt one last time pick it at 1089 and our tick should be right now tick tick is should be 1089 whoa 1088 okay that's fine we don't necessarily need to do that but okay oh that's maybe something we should look at get ticks oh actually that is, okay this is a pretty important thing for destroy timers no this is only a freddy equals zero okay i like that i like that let's keep that the way it is yeah same thing okay we look like we borked no, we didn't bork it. All right, sweet. We're not, we're unborked. Let's, let's run it again though from the, let's, we're going to recap what we did on today's stream now. So we're giving birth to this thing called the timer component. This timer component is a way to make running arbitrary functions that need to happen at a certain tick to make all of that part of the actual game state. So that if you rewind your game state or you fast forward your game state, it naturally rewinds the timer components or fast forwards the timer components right now there's these functors the essentially functions that need to happen at a certain the digits that get called later but these function functors happen at a certain tick and because there's essentially two places where that happens the if we were to try and rewind our game state like let's say we wanted our game to be our, our game was at tick 1000 and we wanted to rewind it back to tick 990 because we have a network rollback. What would happen right now is we would have to go and inspect all of our destroy timers and all these other timers that happen on the tick and are just random. They happen in so many different places. We would have to go to all into all of those and make sure we destroy any of them that are would be would have been destroyed by an entity. We need to recreate them if they are going to be recreated by an entity. We need to rewind them if they were supposed to execute at a certain tick, but now we've rewound to us another tick. There's so many complex things that would have needed to, ta to happen with the old system. But now that we've developed this new system, everything falls away. Everything becomes more simple because if we rewind our entire game state, we are automatically rewinding the timer components. If we rewind our game state to a point where an entity was not even created yet, it needs to be destroyed essentially, then it automatically destroys the timer component. And if we rewind it to a point before an entity was created, and then during our fast forward, we are going to create that entity. We're going to create those timer components again. So essentially what we've done here is we've really simplified the way that entities are being destroyed and also the way that functions, just random, any kind of function can be called and made responsible for by a certain entity. So essentially an entity now owns all of the functions that are being called that are in regards to it. And it just makes everything more safe and better for the entire game. And let's go ahead and prove this, this as sort of like a proof of concept by we're going to run two clients now. So let's go to clients. We're going to set that to two. We're going to run these. And let's see if we have any desyncs. We should we should not have any desyncs, hopefully, not, that are due to this new system, the way we kind of refactored everything. It should just kind of work out because we re, we refactored the way everything works and, and destroy. So what we'll do is we've got two clients here. And if we see that the ping time turns red, that means the game state is 
has been desynchronized. So there we just, yes, we created an entity that just, wait, why did he destroy so much right there? Oh, I don't know if that's working. Yeah, it's not working. Look, something must be wrong with my math there. I need to check this. Basically what's ha what should be happening is we should be attacking these pillars right here and only half of them should be destroyed. See what happens when kid does it. Yeah, look at that. This just do, 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 do. I'm just going to destroy all the way. Okay, so I'll figure that out later. But the good news is that, yep, see, that also proves that it's there's an, an attack component that has been left behind right there because the gold thief just appeared and immediately started getting attacked because there's an, an invisible entity right here that should have been destroyed by our timer. So it has something to do with the input delay because we wrote everything so that it would only destroy a component after the input delay has been elapsed that might need to be rethought. But the good news is that our ping time didn't turn red, which would have indicated a desync. So these clients are still in sync. They're perfectly in sync. Their game states are all synced up. Everything is the same on this guy's screen as it is on this guy's screen. So yeah, that's good news. We just got to fix this one last thing, but I'm going to have to do that after the stream because it's time to take a break for old wizard foo. So thanks a lot for watching this stream. You just witnessed me create a thing called the timer component, which should make everything a lot more simple to run arbitrary functions that are now being attached and made responsible for by specific entities rather than just being arbitrary functions that are executed out in the middle of nothing and nowhere and no one's responsible for them it's gonna be great for multiplayer so thanks a lot for watching and we'll catch you next wednesday later everybody